For years, many people have posted pictures of what appear to be UFOs in art as proof that there has been visitation from spacecraft for at least several hundred years. I will be reading from an excellent website by an Italian art critic, Diego Cuogi, who has systematically pointed out in his research that this is totally untrue. In this short video, I will be dealing with three or four of the more famous ones, but if you have others that you are unsure about, you can visit his website in the description section of this video. You may need to use Google or some other program to have them translated to English, however. I will also say before we get started that I personally don't like this style of art commissioned by the Catholic Church, and while their symbolism is sometimes unbiblical, the fact is that it was at least well understood at the time. Number 1. Crucifixion in Spezdizi Covelli Cathedral in Georgia this crucifixion, located on one side of the grave of Sidonia in Sfestizi Covelli Cathedral, and it is one of the most widely known cases of the misunderstanding of an artwork. It has been published on many UFO web pages, but those who are familiar with symbolism in medieval art understand that there are no mysterious elements in this painting. In fact, in most of the crucifixion scenes done in the Byzantine style, they show the same objects on either side of the cross. They are the sun and the moon, often represented with a human face or figure. Here is a small sample of crucifixions in the Byzantine style showing the sun and the moon with human attributes. But not only in Byzantine Orthodox icons do we find the sun and the moon in crucifixions. They are also found in the work of painters like Duar, Crivelli, Raffaello, Bramantino, and others. Here are some modern examples. Conclusion. This crucifixion contains no UFOs. The two objects near the cross are the anthropomorphic representations of the sun and the moon, shown in much the same way as in many Byzantine crucifixions. Crucifixion in the Vasky Dikani Monastery in Kosovo. This 16th century crucifixion, a fresco in the Vyskoski Dikani Monastery, is like the previous one, considered a UFO painting. The two strange objects at the sides of the cross are considered to be UFOs. This is one of the oldest documented UFO in art cases, because the first articles about it were published in the 60s in the French magazine Sputnik. The fresco was, quote, discovered by Alexander Panovich, a student at the Academy of Arts in Yugoslavia in 1964. After this early publicity, the pictures were featured in many books about UFOs. On many web pages, we read that the two objects in the sky are, without a doubt, spaceships with crew. But this crucifixion also follows the common iconographic model of the Middle Ages. The, quote, deposition from the cross of Benedetto Antolami in the Dome of Parma in particular resembles the crucifixion of Vizaki Dikani. On the edges of the composition, in the same position as in the fresco of Vizaki Dikani, the sun and the moon are represented as human witnesses to the crucifixion, just as they are in the previous painting. In both artwork, the figures who represent the sun and the moon look towards the cross that is located in the center of the composition. The sun and the moon, represented as human figures, are visible in many Byzantine Orthodox sacred paintings, including the treasure of St. Clement and modern Byzantine frescoes. James Hall, author of Dictionary of Subjects and Symbols in Art, writes, The sun and the moon on each side of the cross are regular features of medieval crucifixions. They survived into the early Renaissance but are seldom seen after the 15th century. Their origin is very ancient, he says. It was accustomed to represent the sun and the moon in images of pagan sun gods of Persia and Greece, a practice that was carried over into Roman times on coins depicting the emperors. The sun, sometimes represented as simply a man's bust with a radiant halo, the moon as a woman's with the crescent of Diana, later they reduced the two to plain disks. I would like to personally interject here and say this is what I've been talking about in a lot of previous videos where people like to try to prove that Christianity was based on sun worship and they show modern art as some sort of proof of that. Where well, that only proves that Romans, when they took over Christianity, forced their pagan sun worship onto the religion of Christianity. Before they took it over, the 300 years before they took over Christianity, you could find no um, indication of any kind of sun worship or whatever. It was just the story of Jesus. But it was after Roman took it over that we start seeing these things like halos and, and the rest of it. Continuing, two ivories from the Musée de Cluny, Paris, the sun and the moon are on sides of the cross. Often the sun and the moon were represented as human characters, driving wagons drawn by horses and by oxen, as in this ivory bas relief, the binding of the book of Percopi of Henry II from the 11th century. 
a sculpture by Benedetto Antolami in the Dome of Parma with the story of Barlam and Josephat, where the sun and the moon appear to be doubled in figures of fighting day and night. Conclusion. In the Vizaki Dakani crucifixion fresco, there are no UFOs. The two objects near the cross are the anthropomorphic symbols of the sun and the moon, represented in much the same way as they are in many other Byzantine crucifixions. Next is Madonna con Bambino e Sano Giovanno. This is the painting that more than any other has sparked discussions among ufologists who see in the upper right scene behind the Madonna the proof of a close encounter with an unidentified flying object. In the above mentioned scene we see a character keeping a hand to his forehead and looking towards an apparition in the sky. With him there is a dog who also looks towards the strange object. We see that this is to be found in many nativities of the 1400s and 1500s. It is but the announcement to the shepherds as told in St. Luke's Gospel. And there were many in the same country, shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, an angel of the Lord come upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were sore afraid, and the angel said unto them, Fear ye not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you was born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Here we see two shepherds in many places looking to the angel coming out from the cloud. We can see this scene represented in much the same way of the Madonna with child, and in many other paintings of the Nativity or the Adoration of the Child. These are but a few examples taken from dozens of paintings of the Nativity of Christ, and every one we clearly recognize the angel and see that almost always there is one shepherd holding his hand to his forehead as if shielding his eyes from the light of the glory of the Lord, referred to in the above quote from the Gospel. Often there will also be a dog looking toward the apparition. In many cases the angel comes out of the cloud, lined by light, or in older pictures by golden rays. In this picture we see that an angel appears through a light tear in the sky, while in the Madonna and Child with the infant St. John by Raffaellino, there is only a luminous tear in a big cloud. Also, I feel conclusively, in another tondo attributed to the same artist, it shows the same scene of a shepherd who, with his hand to his forehead and a dog at his side, looks towards an apparition of a red-dressed angel. And in the center, above the Madonna's head, there is the same light rayed cloud. Here is a nativity from Ghirlandaio, with a bright star appearing inside a cloud. And on a hill at the right, the angel appears to the shepherds. Here we find both the angel and the luminous cloud. Also in this nativity, from the Book of Prayers, we recognize the luminous cloud full of little angels. In this nativity, we find the same cloud over the Madonna, while the angel comes out of a similar cloud to make his announcement to the shepherds. We can therefore safely identify the Madonna and child with the infant St. John as the same announcement scene which is described in the Gospel of Luke. The Baptism of Christ, or Art de Gelder. It is really difficult to understand what may have prompted many ufologists to claim that this painting would have been an unidentified flying object, because no one ever gives a magnification of or a decent picture, and it is always plain in small dimensions. Here is a good magnification. This picture represents the baptism of Christ, so we can compare it with many others representing the same scene described in the Gospels. In all four versions, God is witness to the scene of the baptism. And coming from the water, he saw the heavens opened and the Spirit descending upon him like a dove. And a voice came from the clouds, Thou art my beloved Son, in thee I am well pleased. It says, I saw a Spirit descending like a dove from heaven and resting upon him. The Holy Spirit, as a dove, is often depicted in a circle from which light rays that symbolize the divine grace emanate around it. Here we see the classic representation of the third person of the Trinity comes from the dispute of the sacrament by Raphael and the baptism of Christ by Pugrino. Even in the painting of de Gelder, at the center of the circle of light is a small dove, or the Holy Spirit. In the foreground of a hilly landscape, Christ is baptized by St. John amid a circle of onlookers. The two figures are brilliantly lit by rays of light from high above. Here are several other examples of the baptism of Christ, and in many cases it is the same. God the Father is to be shown on top of the dove in a circle of clouds or light in the sky. Again, if you want to see more of these, you can go to the website in the description section of this video, and this person has done this with almost every possible UFO in art 
um, claim that there is made. Also, I will link other things that are often said, like the Ezekiel's wheel vision. People often use that, so I'll link to a place where that is explained as well in the show notes in the description section of this video. Thanks for your time.